This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Your day today is filled with tasks and endless to-do lists. Prioritize your self-care and wellness by using Skillshare as a way to invest in yourself, unwind, and relax. Recently, I found this class by Maria Inesgo, who's a London-based artist with such a distinctive style in her approach in expressive portrait illustration. I'm personally quite a tight painter and illustrator, and it's always refreshing to see one's process of executing more of a loose and expressive approach to their art. In this class, Maria shows her way of sketching and overlaying her sketches on her lightbox until she finds the desired shapes and then painting it using different mediums with different textures. Though this is not my usual go-to style, I really appreciate how expressive illustrations like these can look. There's a sense of relief and honesty of not focusing so much on the fundamentals, but just to focus on painting expressively, which I find can be very personal. The final results are also very much modern and decorative, but it's so open to stylistic interpretation, which I find is a great way to relax and paint in a stress-free manner, especially when Skillshare offers ad-free classes without any unnecessary distractions. If this sounds like something you'd be interested in, the first thousand people to use the link in my description box will get a month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be making this simple and colorful pumpkin doodle. This was so much fun for me to make because I love the color palette of this one and I really enjoyed the loose and effortless way of doodling with these expressive lines. So for this one, I'm going to jump right to the colors. Firstly, this is Cobalt Green by Holbein, New Gamboge by Daniel Smith, Titanium Gold Ochre by Schmincke, Buff Titanium by Daniel Smith, Vermilion by Holbein, and Terra Verde by Holbein. For the pens, I'll be using Tombow Touch Brush Pen, and I'll also be using Snowman Waterproof Drawing Pen. I'm going to get straight to painting. I'm going to be creating blobs using these colors. We're going to be mixing them together and pairing up the colors differently. So despite the limited choice, we can actually come up with a good amount of variations. The first blob that I'm going to create is from a mixture of titanium gold ochre and vermilion to create this soft orange color and as you can see the blob that I'm making is not a perfect circle it's actually quite messy and I also left out some white negative space and while the surface is still damp I like to also dot in a bit more titanium gold ochre because I really like the wet on wet effect Next here I'm creating a deeper orange from a mix of New Gamboge and Vermilion and I'm also going to use a bit of buff titanium to mute the color slightly. Again, I'm going to paint a messy blob and this time I'm going to alternate the colors by adding more buff titanium on the sides and also Vermilion. Next, I'm going to introduce a different hue. For this, I used Terra Verde mixed with Titanium Gold Ochre. As I was painting this, I made a bit of a mistake where I pressed too much with the end of my brush and you see that there's a little end to the circle, but it's okay because we're going to improvise with the doodle with this. Next, I'm going to use the same color mixture, but I added Cobalt Green to darken it slightly. And for the next one, I'm just going to use Cobalt Green with Buff Titanium to create a cooler green tone. Up to this part of the blobs, I realized how much I love the color palette. This was quite experimental for me and I ended up loving the color combination. In fact, this is probably my favorite color combination for a doodle that I've done so far. So I would definitely encourage you to experiment yourself if you're up for it by either using different colors for the palette or by using the same colors here but creating your own fun color combinations. As you can see, I've created a few orange tones so far by using more or less the same colors with different ratios. And by changing the ratio and the main base color, you can really bring up the saturation or change the tonality of the colors. For this next one, I was thinking of incorporating pumpkin or squash with different shapes as well, just to make the composition more dynamic. So I made this giant 
comma shape quite loosely and while the yellow green is still a bit damp I added some orange and some darker greens to see how the colors are going to travel across each other. While I was painting this, I didn't really have a full composition in mind. I just wanted the shape of the blobs and the size of the blobs to complement each other. But at times, I do get the urge of adding different shapes like the squash that I painted earlier. So whenever I get an idea in my head, I would just paint it on as I go and see how it turns out because that's the fun of doodling. So after I dried all the colors, I'm just going to start doodling. You can go straight in with pen, but I'm just going to show you how to do it with pencil and then line it with pen afterwards if that's a bit more comfortable. This way you have the flexibility of erasing in case you make a mistake. I mentioned before that this doodle was quite experimental for me, so before sketching on the whole composition, I actually tried to figure out what style of doodle I was going for. So I started with this pumpkin to be my trial, and I'm going to try to see what style of lines and textures I come up with on this one. One main thing that I don't like about using drawing pens like this is because the lines that I create can sometimes look too boring because I can't really play too much with the weight from the pressure. So to create the different line textures, sometimes I like to angle the pen slightly and use a bit less pressure so the ink would flow a bit slower. And this will create this dry brush looking texture to make the lines look a bit more expressive and alive. While I doodle using these textures, sometimes I like to go back and forth to create more of a scratchy texture as well. After I finish drawing the main outline, I go over the lines again using my brush pen. And this brush pen is great because you can actually control the weight of the lines with pressure. However, it can get quite thick and I don't want the black to overpower the soft colors, so I'm going to limit the use of this brush pen and go back to my drawing pen. I want to mention though that the brush pen that I'm using here isn't actually waterproof. When I tried to paint on top of this pen on a different paper, it didn't bleed much and it was fine so I thought it was waterproof like the Kuretake Tombo pen that I usually use. But with this paper, when I decided to paint more on top of the outline, it bled a lot. So if you decide to use this pen, please go over the lines after you're completely done with the painting portion and that's what I'm going to do for the rest of the pumpkins. Once I'm happy with the outline style and the dotted texture, I erase the pencil marks and I'm going to use the first pumpkin as a reference in terms of style for the rest of the composition so it's nice and cohesive. So from here, I want to sketch out the rest of the pumpkins with pencil first. I just want to enjoy and relax with this doodle so I'm going to do this the easy and safe way. When I'm sketching out the pumpkins, I try to create different shapes and make imperfect circular shapes to give them unique characteristics. I like to also play with the pumpkin ribs by making them uneven in terms of size, thickness, and depth. As an example, I'm really exaggerating the ribs for this small one here. It looks a bit more like flower petals, but we'll paint on more details afterwards to give more of a three-dimensionality. I also like to play with the stems because pumpkin stems can have really fun twists and turns. For my composition, I'm sticking with a side view and a top view for the pumpkins to keep it nice and simple but still dynamic, but if you feel like playing with more angles, I'm sure it'll look great too. Even if you only painted circular blobs, please don't let this stop you from doodling other shapes for the pumpkins. It will still look fun, and if you want to fill in the whole pumpkin with a certain color, you can also go back and paint more later on anyway. And this way we can just build on the composition as we go, and this is actually the flexibility that I enjoy with these types of doodles. I seem to have missed the small green blob on top, but from here, I'm going to outline all the pumpkins using my drawing pen. Just like the first pumpkin, I want the lines to be textured and expressive, and at times, I also want to double up the lines unevenly to make it look more scribbly and fun. 
To make the base of the stem look like it's sunk into the pumpkin a little bit, I like to darken parts of the ribs which are closest or directed towards the stem. And the extra dark lines will make it look a bit sunken, so even if I'm drawing from the top, this will still have some three-dimensional form from the outline. I really like these small square pumpkins. I'm not even sure if they exist, but it reminded me of the square watermelon from Japan. And I basically just drew it like this because the blobs initially look like squares. So even if a certain shaped pumpkin doesn't exist, this shouldn't stop you from doodling them because it's actually really fun to create these weird shapes. This is also where I realized I left out this lone green blob, so I decided to draw it out straight with pen. Anyway, I think from here I'm just going to keep outlining the rest of the pumpkins using my drawing pen. Once I'm done outlining them with my drawing pen, I'm going to erase the pencil marks. After adding on the black lines, even if the lines are fairly thin, I can see that it needs a bit more color because it's a bit too faded after the color has completely dried. Here I started with the first pumpkin. I'm just glazing over a little bit of the same orange mix to the bottom left side of the pumpkin to add a bit of shadow and form. And this is where I start to realize that the outline that I drew out using my brush pen was starting to bleed out. So I'm just going to add additional shadow colors to the rest of the pumpkins before redefining some of the outlines using my brush pen. When I'm painting the shadows, I like to keep it cohesive and I place them mostly on the bottom left. I don't know why, I still wanted to have the same light source for some reason even though it's a doodle, but I'm sure even if you change the position of the layered shadows, it'll still look fine. I also like to vary the textures because I know some pumpkin types can be a bit spotty looking, so for that I use the tip of my brush to paint on dotted textures. When I'm painting the shadows or the textures, I'm not being too careful with how I paint this. Sometimes I even like to intentionally go over the lines because I want to keep the loose feeling of this painting. Because I used my large brush to paint on the additional layer, the paint was quite watery and when it dries, it will be quite pale. So here I'm adding more redefinition to the shape of the pumpkins using my small brush. If at any point you feel like you want to stop adding colors to create a simpler, cleaner doodle or even introduce different mediums to this doodle, feel free to do so because I think it'll be really fun. and. It'll be a bit more personal to you if you customize it yourself. As I'm voiceovering this, I can also imagine some extra colored pencil textures would be a really nice addition to this doodle too. 
So here I more or less have the same idea as before, but because I'm using my smaller brush this time, I can add more textured lines to the pumpkin, but again, I'm still keeping this as loose as I can make it. I'm just going to keep painting on more details. As you can see, I like to vary the textures between different pumpkins. Some can look more clean, some a bit more messy, and you can experiment with different texture patterns using watercolors as well if you would like. You can add things like tiny texture dots or dashed lines or even scribbles. I'm going to add a bit of splatters after this, so I'm just going to dry everything off so the splatter doesn't bleed into the pumpkins. For the splatters, I like to mix between the colors, so some splatters are green and some are a bit more orangey yellow. And I use my large brush because I want the splatters to be large in size. In fact, after this, I ended up enlarging some of them manually with my brush as well as adding extra splatters manually so I can control the placement. Okay, so from here, I feel like I have enough colors. I don't want to overdo the details of the pumpkins and I want to make sure everything's completely dry because I want to add additional outlines using my brush pen, which isn't waterproof. As I'm outlining using my brush pen, I also decided to add on the textured dots. I feel like it's a bit faster because the tip of the brush pen helps the ink glides a bit faster in comparison to the drawing pen. So from here, I'm going to add the additional highlights using this pen, also the textures for the rest of the pumpkins. So this is basically done, but I feel like the composition is still a bit empty and I want to fill it up with extra elements. Here I'm using new gamboge and I'm following it up with the yellow-green mix from before just to add a couple of pumpkin blossoms. And I also want to use the yellow-green mix to add one additional autumn leaf. I'm just painting these elements freehand very loosely and because I want to keep this cohesive with the rest of the composition, I'm going to dry this off so I can add outlines on top. For the outline, I feel comfortable just drawing them freehand so I'm just going to do that but if you want to add these additional elements and you feel uncomfortable to draw it freehand, you can also sketch it out with pencil first just like the pumpkins.
And lastly, I'm just going to add some final touch-ups to finish off the painting. And that's pretty much it for this doodle. This was so relaxing and fun for me to draw and paint. And I hope you guys also enjoyed watching the process. Like usual, all the links to my social media will be in my description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!